Hey, Ruth DeGans here. I wanted to share with you a snippet from our last networking event. The topic was self-love, and we had a very special speaker. Simone DaCosta is a psychotherapist, author, and yoga teacher, and loves combining her knowledge and personal experiences into self-development workshops and programs. Her passion lies in helping women reconnect to their true selves, find more peace, self-worth, and fulfillment in life, and prioritize their mental, emotional, and physical well-being. Okay, we have today Simone da Costa here with us. Simone is a psychotherapist, author, and yoga teacher, and she loves combining her knowledge and personal experiences into self-development workshops and programs. So her passion lies in helping women reconnect to their true selves, find more peace, self-worth, and fulfillment in life, and prioritize their mental, emotional, and physical well-being. So today on Valentine's Day, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. We are just so happy to just have her giving a talk on the ever-important topic of self-love. And we recognize the importance of this topic topic because it affects so many different areas of our lives. So Simon, thank you so much for joining us. And I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, thank you. And hi again, everybody, and happy Valentine's Day. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen. I made a few slides for us so it can stay on time. We want to be brief and concise, but I want to give you a lot of information about this juicy topic of self-love, which is my favorite. Okay, so you guys can see my screen, right? Great, and I can see you. Okay, so as I said, one of my favorite topics, and I'll tell you why in a bit, but first of all, Ruth kind of introduced me, well, she did introduce me, but who am I and what qualifies me to speak on this topic, right? So, okay, there's all the titles in terms of career and development. So, yes, I'm a psychotherapist and a yoga and mindfulness teacher, and I blend a lot of that work into workshops, which I just love being able to create unique workshops with this integration of yoga and psychology. And through that work, I actually created a book of journal prompts that really helps people to navigate their self-love and self-discovery as well. And that book is called Unfolding. But beyond that, beyond the titles and the studies, I too am a sufferer of low self-worth. And honestly, I've seen, I think, over 200 clients in the last four years of my private practice. And I see self-worth and the lack of self-love at the basis of so many people's issues, presenting challenges in life, whether it's relationships or career, wondering what to do, or really some people, they feel very depressed or low mood and they come to me and they say, but I don't know why I shouldn't be feeling like this. My life on paper looks fine. And and self-worth and self-love is at the root of that too. So that's why it's my favorite topic because as much as self-love might have become a bit more of a cliche or a fad lately, which I, it, it's a pity when that happens because it turns some people off, um, but it's become more prevalent because it is this important. So I'm hoping if you have any pre preconditioned biases around this topic that you just open it out and see what I have to present and then see what you think when we finish. Okay, so I've been on this journey for a long time, about the last 11 years, just my own journey to heal my own self-worth, to love myself more and more. And so I hope that I have some stuff to share with you guys, right, on this topic. So the number one thing is that people, they hear from others, oh, you just have to love yourself. So they say, yes, great, but how? How on earth do we do that? So guys, I'm literally going to give you an equation to break it down. I'm giving you the answers on how to. So grab your notes. Uh, whether you're on a laptop or your paper and your pen, because I'm breaking it down for you, okay? These are the secrets right here. So how to love yourself, I've created an equation over the years, and it is self-knowledge 
plus self-acceptance is what equals self-love. Okay, this is the equation, the recipe. Self-knowledge plus self-acceptance equals self-love. So I'm going to break down each of these components for you so that you really get access and this notion of just love yourself can become more tangible and you can come away from this talk with some steps to start, okay? So self-knowledge, first of all, what is it? This is you just really getting to know yourself. Now, my guess is if you're on this call or watching this recording after the fact, my guess is that you have done your personal work. Maybe you've been in therapy, maybe you've done some workshops and webinars. So I would guess that you would answer this part as saying, I do know myself. And that would be amazing. So whether you're brand new to it or you have done some introspection before, the thing about self-knowledge is that we have to do it over and over again. And I know some people don't wanna hear that. They wanna think that they're done with this part, but honestly, we can see how much we grow and change year to year, right? Even sometimes within a space of some months, something in life happens, we are growing and changing all the time. So it means we have to get to know ourselves again and again and again. And we go through different stages in life too. So all of that is really important just to get to know yourself again. I love on my birthday, I would use that as a marker at each year to do a bit of introspection and check in, well, who am I today? Because who I am today might be totally different to who I was last year. So some of the tools you can use to get to know yourself a little better, it's your self-discovery, it's introspection. You want to be asking yourself questions. So journaling is an excellent tool for this, whether you just write about your experiences day to day or week to week that would give you insight into who you are or better yet journal prompts because maybe they're going to ask you a question that you didn't think of yourself so it can really take you out of the box and get you to know yourself better and better engaging in self-development workshops going on retreats different things i remember someone telling me that um being on a self-development workshop showed was an indicator of not being mentally well, right? And they didn't want the world to see that. And I thought, I have to beg to differ because sure, some people, if they are struggling, they do go to workshops or therapy. But on the contrary, if you're in a workshop, it means you're already bettering your mental health. So it means that you're actually quite well. So anyways, that was just a side note, but go into your workshops. Um, I wrote down here astrology because interestingly enough, I don't follow it to a T, you know, I don't know what my horoscope is today, but I think when I was around 18, I found out my sun sign, which is the one that most people know in astrology, their sun sign. And on the most basic level, reading this as maybe elements about myself, it helped me put words to aspects about myself that I sensed, but I didn't have the language for. So for me, it did resonate. Some people might read their astrology signs and not resonate with it at all. That's okay. For me, it did resonate. So actually what it helped me with was a little bit more self-acceptance as well, just to be so young and feel different aspects about myself not only the good right the shadow side of your astrology sign as well and feeling like oh there's other people like this out there as well so it helps me grow in self-acceptance as well and then i've put two more kind of personality type um modalities here they are two huge modalities. So if you're going to dabble in either one of these, the human design and the Enneagram, I would advise that you pick one because they're, they're really big. I've only dipped my toes in each. I don't, I'm not an expert, but it gave me insight into who I am, how I work, how I relate to others, how I function in my career, things like that. So if you feel to dabble and get to know yourself, I find 
a lot of these tools quite helpful. The other aspect of getting to know yourself is self-awareness. And self-awareness comes easier than you think, and it is half the work done. So I know I'm here, we have this whole equation, and we're dissecting it. It might start to feel like a lot, but really when you start, you realize, okay, it's actually not that much, and it's simpler than I thought theoretically. But that's why we have to start the process. So two ways to build more self-awareness can be through meditation, mindfulness, therapy, of course, because you're kind of talking about things in real time and getting that mirror of a person to offer things back to you. But self-awareness is just day-to-day -day tuning in. You might be heading to work in the car or in public transport, and you just take a pause and you start to notice, what am I thinking about? What am I feeling in this moment? That's mindfulness and that's self-awareness. Right there, you're done. Okay, so we can all start that from now. I am going to put in the chat for you a free introspection guide so you can get started right away. It's a nice long PDF, so I would suggest maybe not going all at it in one go. Do a little bit, step away, come back, make it a little project for maybe a week. So I'm going to give that to you at the end. I'll pop it in the chat. All right. So then we move on to self-acceptance. And of course, all of this is just in brief, right? I could do a three-hour workshop on self-acceptance, and I probably will <laughs> in upcoming weeks. So you can stay tuned. I'll put all of that in the chat so that you can sign up and stay tuned for when that comes. But self-acceptance now is... It's going to start to happen organically as you do your introspection and your self-knowledge. You will start to accept some parts. Then what we do in integrative psychotherapy, this model that brings in Carl Jung's work and the yogic side, the, the Buddhist philosophy, that type of psychotherapy, we do what's called shadow work. So it might be within therapy or in a workshop. But in shadow work, what we want to do is go more into the unconscious psyche and find, yes, strengths, but also perceived flaws or characteristics that we accidentally labeled as unacceptable. This happens for every single human unconsciously when we're growing up whether it's childhood or adolescence, even sometimes in adulthood, we're going through life and experiencing things. Either people tell us and then we learn it verbally or just through experiences, we accidentally pick up notions of feeling like, oh, this part of me, this person doesn't like, so I should hide it away and never show it again to the world. So that's what is called our shadow, the stuff that gets hidden and repressed. The issue with that is that when it's repressed, we're not looking at it, so it's festering over here in the dark. And then when we least expect it, it pops up out of our control because we couldn't see it. So that's why, one, it's unconscious, we don't know about it, so we have to do some digging. But then when we bring this kind of stuff to the light, now we have more control over it and it helps us become whole again as well. Because when we're casting off parts of ourselves and saying, you're not allowed here, you can't sit with us, we become fragmented. Okay, so the shadow work helps us to become whole and that really helps us feel more fulfilled, happier. When, we, when we're sad and we don't know why, this can be a lot of the aspects at play. So that's shadow work. Again, a whole two workshops in itself. <laughs> And then the second part of self-acceptance will be to bring in elements of mindfulness. So mindfulness isn't just the practice, like yoga isn't just the postures we do on the mat. It has a whole philosophy, same as mindfulness. So mindfulness is essentially Buddhism. So we have nice qualities of acceptance, non-judgment, compassion that aid in our journey towards self-acceptance. 
So whenever you find out about yourself, when you start your self-inquiry, you want to recognize it, accept it, try your hardest not to judge it. Because so many of us have this rampant inner critic that just decides that everything is shit. So <laughs> we need to put that inner critic in check and really try so hard not to judge ourselves and what we find out about ourselves. The antidote to that is compassion. All right, so self-compassion, again, a whole component by itself, but there's so much resources online that you can find and that I can share with you as well. All right, so these are your outlines, right? We did self-knowledge, the two parts that you can help to go deeper, and this is a brief outline of self-acceptance, two things that you can start to do on your own to start to accept yourself, shadow work, mindfulness. Okay, and again, there will be workshops on this coming up if you would like a guide to do it along with, that will help you. All right, so when you've grown to know yourself better and accept yourself for who you are, all of you, then you will automatically begin to love yourself more and more. And again, this is why it's easier than it seems right now, maybe with all this theory. Once you start, honestly, that work is, is half the work and it begins to happen organically. So this is the foundation of self-love, but it then needs to come through your actions. How do you show yourself that you love and care for yourself? So it could be, these are just a couple examples, what you put into your body, the boundaries you set. What do you do for relaxation and fun? Some people, I ask this to them and they say, what is relaxation? What is fun? Right? So this is an act of showing yourself you care because you know that you need this for balance and for happiness. So in order to really implement both introspection and the integration of that, your self-love in action, I finally have my second book of journal prompts coming out and it's part introspection, part intention, you setting your intentions for your self-love and care. And then the third part is integration. So it becomes a 90 day planner where you can plug your goals and habits into it. So you can get very strategic and tangible with your goals and your self care. So this is coming out very soon, but for anybody who's in Trinidad, I'm going to have an official launch in a few weeks, around the Mar March 9th, maybe, still planning, and we'll have physical copies there, so you can also read. All right, so that's just a little exciting thing to look forward to. So I'll leave you with just a little message here. Do, don't let your self-care be shoulds. That's what happens, right? We go on self-help sites and Instagram pages and books, and then our self-care becomes a should. Oh, I should exercise. I should um, meditate. But then it's just another thing on your to-do list. So try to get your self-care actions to feel like an authentic act of self-love and devotion to you because you matter too. Right? A lot of us are catering towards other people or our careers, and we forget that we are the common denominator in those relationships, in the job. Without you, they wouldn't exist. So just remembering to pour a little bit of self love and pour a lot of self love and self care back into you as well. Okay. So that's it in brief. So. We can open up the floor if you all have any specific questions for me, or if you just want to say that if there was an insight that you got from the session. Thanks for tuning into our talk. I hope you got some great takeaways from this session, and I look forward to seeing you next time.